my goodness. Just like we learned in kindergarten. Good looking little swim bait right there. Look at that sexiness. They're all hollow all the way through. Point shot it. A little bit of a bloodline in there with that green. What's going on everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Bee Fishing and today we're going to be making baits again. As predicted, as when y'all saw me make the sexy shad in that 4.5 swim bait, I was going to get orders. I knew I was. I even told y'all right out the emails before I even cracked this thing open, this thing's going to be mwah. And it was. It looked really, really good. I do have a way to make it better, I think. So we're going to do that today. I've just got a lot of orders to fill. You can definitely tell spring is here, or at least it's coming for most of everybody because everything I'm making today, with the exception of I've got two randoms. I got told I, I want two random baits, either a Cinco, a Crawl, something. I'm gonna do those random ones, but for most everybody else, it's Swim Bait City. Everybody wants Swim Baits, either the 4.5s or the 3.5s. So that's what we're gonna do today. We're gonna make some Swim Baits in some pretty awesome colors. We got like a Bama Bug Swim Bait color. We got some Core Shots. We got the Sexy Shad. Uh, it's gonna be a good one. Hang tight, let's make some baits, let's do it. So I've actually got this from the Sexy Shad last time. That is the top part of Sexy Shad, that blue with the chartreuse and a little bit of white flake in it. So we're actually gonna reheat this oven. You can actually cut this up, throw it back in, reheat it, and it'll melt back down you can shoot it again. So we're gonna reuse this as our base since it's already a good color. We already know we want this one. And I'm gonna make a change to the silver. We're not gonna make it as gray as we did. Because I think we went a little overboard with the gray. For the most part, I want it to be just a little bit white, but mainly just this silver. So a good bit of that, one drop of white. Almost making it like milky. a much better color combo. All right, folks, these are ready to go. We got our silver. That's gonna be the bottom. So let's go here. We got our blue with chartreuse and white flake. It's gonna be the top, it needs to go up here. So we're gonna here goes nothing. So let's crack these open and see what we got. Oh my goodness. Look at that sexiness. I'm gonna have to get the camera down here and let y'all see this up close. That is a fire looking swim bait. I like that a lot. All right, so in the cold water bath they go. A lot of y'all are asking, and you can see them better in the water, cold water bath. That right there, my friends, is sexy shad for sure. That's a dynamite color. So I just put them in a cold water bath that helps them cure quicker. Uh, let's shoot some more. That is an awesome looking color. Man, these things turned out so well. So well. I mean, that is just a good looking bait. Solid. So we're gonna move on. I've got to shoot some more of these. And then I've gotta also shoot some three and a half inch swim baits. He's got a Bama bug color. I'm gonna let y'all in on a little secret. So this is a do it mold, okay? This is a do it essential series mold. And it's called the Ripper. Now, a lot of people will give you crap about do-it molds, saying, oh, they're sand cast, they're terrible, they don't look very good, they don't come out glossy. Okay, yes, you're right, because it's sand cast, these molds don't come out with a glossy look on the bait. The bass don't care about that, though. When it's in water, it looks exactly the same, so I don't want to hear that. That's, that's a garbage argument. But what you can do to get you a glossy mold, very simple. All that is is vegetable oil. 
You can use canola if you want to be less fat and be a little bit healthier. I don't care. But this, you can use vegetable oil. Just spray it, a little thin coat on that. And when you shoot your mold, it will put a thin layer of oil in between the mold and the plastisol, and it'll give you that glossy look. It is a little hack that I have found works really well. So if you ever see a gloss of oil on my workbench, it's because I've been using this. You can use it on these do-it molds and it makes them super shiny. All right, so we're gonna start on this Bama Bug color, which is really, I call it Bama Bug, but what we're actually going for is more like a bluegill color. So I'm gonna start with the bottom color first. I think, no, we're gonna do the top color first. Because the other one's got more in it. We're actually want more, more of the top color. So we're gonna start with green and brown. So the next thing we're gonna need is red glitter. So we want a red, little bit of red glitter. And I, you know what, I'm gonna take some creative liberties here. I'm gonna put some red, but I'm also gonna put a little bit of orange in there. Orange is gonna help out with what we're trying to accomplish here. So we're gonna do a mix of red glitter and copper glitter. I think that's what we're really looking for. Oh yeah, I like that a lot. So we do have a little bit of orange and red glitter. More red than anything, but that orange really pops. I mean, really pops, I like it. Now we're just gonna have to give it an orange belly when we mix it together, and that's where this color is gonna come in. All right, time to mix in the orange color. Just like we learned in kindergarten, mix yellow and red to get orange. Just how intense do we want this color is the question. Obviously not that intense, so we're gonna have to go back to the yellow. That, that red really did a number. And a little bit of white just to brighten it up a little bit. Because because we're mixing a color here, I almost want a sherbet just like that. Oh yeah. I've said it on here before, if when you're mixing colors, your lighter color, you want to go a little lighter than you'd want, or than you'd think you'd want. Uh, mainly, <clears throat> mainly because when you mix the lighter color with the darker color, the lighter color gets a little washed out. Now we're gonna put some black flake in this just to give it some contrast. All right, so these are gonna be our bluegill colors. I'm just gonna add some salt into these. All that salt does is help the sink rate. It shouldn't affect the color too much although you are adding something to it, so it will affect your color. All right, everybody ready? Here goes nothing. All righty, let's see what we got. Let's see what we turned out with. Oh yeah, I think he's gonna be happy with these. Gary, what you think, bud? I think you're gonna be happy with those. It's a good looking little swim bait right there. I'm sure you can't see it, dark with orange belly. I'll show it to you in the water here shortly. 
let's crack open the uh, the Ripper, the 3.5, and uh, let's see how this one did. I fear that it's gonna mix. If it mixes, not really what he wanted. Yeah, these just can't do it. That's no good. No good at all. That's bad news bears right there. That one ain't gonna happen. I got an air bubble in that one. That one's no good anyway. Mm -mm -mm. No bueno. So we're gonna do something a little different now. Obviously gonna do these swim baits. So, we're gonna finish his swim baits. Three packs of these in this color. That's a pretty good random bait, I would think. So we're gonna say that's one of the randoms. Gotta make one more set of those to make that a pack. And uh, that'll be almost that order down. Ooh. As y'all can see, I came back and I shot another sexy shad. I've got a sexy shad shot and an extra of the sort of bluegill color, that Bama Crawl color, really is what it is. We're just calling it bluegill. But it's really a Bama Crawl color shot. And I'm doing that for the thumbnail. So I'm making some extras for myself for the thumbnail. Outside of that though, that's gonna do it for today. Not for this video, but for today. Um, I still need to mix up the olive green with kind of a whitish, milky, smoky, clear outside with that olive green core shot. I'm still gonna mix that up. Guy wants six bags of those. That's a lot. That's a lot to do and I'm not gonna be able to get it done today, mainly because I'm tired. Um, I've been out here for about an hour or two shooting these baits and I'm gonna head inside and spend the rest of my Sunday afternoon with my, my wife and the baby. I'm gonna call it for today, but I will probably be back on this video right about... Ah. So we're back for a second day of making these baits. We made these guys the actual like sexy shad. Then we've got these guys in like a bluegill. And now we're gonna do some core shots. Um, I've got another guy who wanted some core shots. He said like a clear with a little bit of white, like a milky, very see-through, translucent white uh, body with the core shot of like an olive green or a green, basically mimicking like a gizzard shad. So that's what we're gonna be doing today. I'm gonna bring y'all back once I get all the plastisol poured and uh, heat it up and we'll start. So let's do this. All right, so I've got some clear plastisol over here. For everyone who always asks what plastic I use, I used to use dead on plastic, the uh, swim blade, the swim bait blend or the medium blend and now I'm using the bait plastics plastic and you may be asking yourself well why'd you switch well number one dead on plastic was getting crazy with their shipping number two this is what I have to deal with at the top of every time I warm up I don't have a uh, degassing chamber all this is is nothing but like air bubbles I mean you can't even see through it. it's just so thick with air bubbles listen to this just nothing but air. You don't want air in your plastic. And uh, I've got a ton of it worked out of here. Um, that is a whole clump of plastic I can't use because it's just full of air bubbles. So if you ever wondered why, that's why I switched to bait plastics. And uh, it doesn't do this near, near as bad. So what my guy wants, and you can actually still see, there's a little bit of air pockets around the edge, but inside the plastic it's not. Um, and I can, when I put my injector in, I'll pass all those air bubbles. So we're good with that. I'm gonna put just a, a little bit of white. Not a whole lot of white, just a smidge. Just maybe like a drop or two in there. And uh, we're gonna give it a good stir. Again, we don't want this to be white. We just want a little bit of a, like a milky white, which is exactly what we've just accomplished here. We definitely want some silver glitter, and we may, maybe, I may even put some disco glitter in there because it gives it just a little bit of green. There's some silver. Load it up with silver. Disco is like a white green, just depends on the way the 
the light hits it. It's like a white green. Hopefully you are seeing that. When it hits this, it looks green. See how it's got, it's white, but it's green. Oh yeah, that's what we're going after. I've got my coronavirus mask on. And uh, we're gonna shoot these baits real quick. Since we're ready to go. Hopefully we can get six packs out of these things. Things open, see what we got. Hopefully they look pretty good. Looks like they wanted to stick to this side, that's okay. Yeah, those look pretty good. They're clear, but they're also white, which is what I was going for. I'll take that all day. Now these core shots are a little bit different. And the fact that I need scissors. So that rod, we need to take out that rod. So I'm gonna cut around the head, pull that part off, pull this part off. Take that off, hopefully. So I've taken the top off. We're gonna cut right around the tail right there. We're gonna slide this thing off just like that. And we're gonna cut the tail right there. So there's the body. We're gonna insert green in that. It's gonna go through that tube. Or at least that's the theory. All right, folks, so I have a bunch of swim bait bodies in here. They're all hollow all the way through. And what we're going to do is we're going to take this, which is clear, we're going to get like an, a green out of it. Kind of like a, uh, well, like what we're trying to make, a uh, gizzard shad. And we're going to inject it into that hollow piece and make the tail out of it, which is what a core shot is. So we're going to do that real quick. I've never made this color before, so bear with me because this could turn out terrible. We'll bring it back with a little bit of white. There, like an olive type green, just like a pale green. And now we're gonna inject it. We actually are gonna add a little bit of flake to it though. A little bit of black flake. So now that the green is made up, we've mixed it all up. We're actually gonna take our swim baits we're going to place them back in the molds. Just like you're seeing me do here. Then we're going to close them up. Cinch them down. And shoot it. Let's see how bad this one is. Or if I'm going to be pleasantly surprised. It looks like I'm going to be pleasantly surprised. How about that? Core shotted. A little bit of a bloodline in there with that green, then a green tail. How about that? Pretty freaking awesome. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to shoot all five of these off camera, then I'll bring y'all back and we'll wrap up the video and there may even be a giveaway, so stay tuned. Alright ladies and gentlemen, so I think I'm done. Look at all these. That right there is a whole lot of swim baits with those tails. Like I was showing you, core shotted, clear with a little bit of white and silver flake in there, core shotted with like an olive green tail and center. Um, I've got at least six packs in there. I've actually got a handful more and believe it or not We only had three that did not turn out 
Out of all those, just three. I can live with that. That's not a bad ratio. But we've got my dude Bill hooked up with all the swim baits he needs. And then uh, I made him some, some worms there too that float, so he should like those. And then we've got these guys. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna use these and a couple of spares of those to shoot a thumbnail. Now, if you've made it this far in the video, number one, I really appreciate it. And to show my appreciation, if you will hit the like button and leave a comment below on what of the three that I made today were your favorite, I'm gonna do a sample pack. Everything in the thumbnail is gonna go to a giveaway to you. So I will randomly select the winner in about uh, just a few days, probably by the next video that gets uploaded. So all you have to do is check the next video that I release. It'll be in the description, the winner from the last video. And if you see your name, you know what to do. Email me, it'll be right in the description as well. Or you can hit me on Instagram, Facebook, doesn't matter. As long as you get with me, again, I'll do that by the next video that I release in a you can, win, you can win a sample pack of all three of the ones I've made, all the three of the swim baits I've made today. So again, if you wanna win, all you gotta do is like the video, leave a comment below on what your favorite of the three I made was. And uh, as always, if you haven't, hit the red subscribe button, turn it gray, hit the ding dong notifications if you wanna be notified anytime I drop a new video. And guys, that's gonna do it for this one. Everybody be safe out there. Wear your mask so you don't get the coronavirus. And we'll catch you on the next one, later.